Lord be with you. And also with you. Welcome to the Lord's house on this first Sunday in Advent. We join together in the singing of our first hymn, hymn number 341, Lift Up Your Heads, Ye Mighty Gates. of sins, O Lord, who could stand. Therefore, you are 
Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness, and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a call and servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sin. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Behold, your King is coming to you, righteous and having salvation, who in the skies can be compared to the Lord, who among the heavenly beings is like the Lord. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Steadfast love and faithfulness go before you. Blessed are the people who know the festal shout, who walk, O Lord, in the light of your face, who exult in your name all the day, and in your righteousness are exalted. For our shield belongs to the Lord, our King, to the Holy One of Israel. Behold, your King is coming to you, righteous and having salvation. With you. And also with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come, that by your protection we may be rescued from the threatening perils of our sins and saved by your mighty deliverance. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for this, the first Sunday in Advent, is from Jeremiah chapter 33. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will dwell securely. And this is the name by which it will be called, The Lord is our righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Epistle from 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. What thanksgiving can we return to God for you, for all the joy that we feel for your sake before our God, as we pray most earnestly night and day that we may see you face to face and supply what is lacking in your faith? Now may your God and Father himself and our Lord Jesus direct our way to you, and may the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another and for all, as we do for you, so that he may establish your hearts, blameless in holiness before our God and Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus with all his saints. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for our Alleluia and verse and for our gospel lesson. to St. Luke, the 19th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. When Jesus had said these things, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he drew near to Bethphage and Bethany at the mount that is called Olivet, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village in front of you, where on entering you will find a colt tied on which no one has ever yet sat. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why are you untying it, you shall say this, The Lord has need of it. 
So those who were sent away, and so those who were sent went away and found it as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owners said to them, Why are you untying the colt? They said, The Lord has need of it. And they brought it to Jesus, and throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. And as he rode along, they spread their cloaks on the road. As he was drawing near already on the way down the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the very stones would cry out. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise we join together this morning the confession of our Christian faith with the Nicene Creed. We confess together, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is spoke by the prophets. I believe in one holy Christian apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. We join together in the singing of our hymn of the day. We sing the first four stanzas of hymn number 332, Savior of the Nations Come. from God our Father and Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text for this morning is our Old Testament lesson from Jeremiah 33. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Your brothers and sisters in Christ, this season of Advent is a time of remembrance and it is a time of preparation. Remembrance, of course, about the promises that God has made to his people. 
to Israel, of course, in the Old Testament, as well as to us even now, to all believers throughout all time. This is how the people of God lived. They lived in the promises that God made. The promise, of course, that was paramount in their lives was that one would come who would crush the head of Satan. That promise, given millennia, of course, before our Savior even was born, was the promise that carried on even to the king of Israel, that promise that was given to Abraham and David and everyone before and after them until the time was accomplished. Israel did not live, though, as God commanded. Israel didn't live as God said to live. He said to put me first. To have no other gods. Of course, we know that we haven't either. We have not lived as God has called us to live, but yet we also know the promise as they did. For Jesus was the king of that promise. The king who would sit upon the throne of his father David Forever. There is only one person that could fulfill that promise, and it was Jesus. But they had to remember that the promise that God gave them was so much more than they could even imagine. Sadly, we know that the king, Jesus, was not living up to the standards of certain people, in the New Testament. But he didn't care. He really didn't because, of course, it wasn't to their standards that he was trying to live. Or rather, did live. For he is the king of eternity. He is the one of righteousness. Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Even though by the time that this was written, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdoms were having, well, they were in captivity and being taken into captivity. And all kinds of trials were taking place. And yet even Jeremiah is able to proclaim to them hope. Remember, when Israel went into captivity in Babylon, the Lord said through Jeremiah, Live! Get houses, property, take wives, give your sons wives, and so forth, so that you will not be forgotten. Why? Because one day, they were going to hear the promise that they were going to return to that which God had given to them. See, again, this is how we know the promises of God are always fulfilled. Because as our text goes on, in those days, at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. This righteous branch, of course, for us now, living is as Christ has called us to. We know it's Jesus. That time that was accomplished there in the city of Bethlehem. When the time, whose time was accomplished? Well, it wasn't man's time, because remember, men had been looking for the Messiah Forever, for generations, he hadn't come. They lived, they died. But they lived in the promise that it was going to take place. God never promised Israel when the Messiah would come, just the matter of fact that he would come. 
even if it lasted even into our time. And he hadn't come yet. The promise was still going to be accomplished. But see, that's just it. We live on the other side of that accomplishment. Christ was born, did die, did ascend to the Father, and yet is with us at this very moment. Trusting in Him is now our lives. Knowing that again another church year has begun. The season of Advent is where we are able to see in God's Word His love, His power for us as His people. Knowing full well that God didn't have to do any of this. He doesn't need our worship. We worship because we are His people. He didn't need man running around on earth but He gave us life that we may know who He is. As we learn in the Catechism, it is all out of Father Divine goodness and mercy that God has done this for us. That this righteous branch that has sprung up from David is executing justice and righteousness. For we now are living in His righteousness. We now know that we are holy and blameless because of Christ's blood shed for us. That's why our text ends with, In those days Judah will be saved, and Jerusalem will dwell securely, and this is the name by which it, not he, but it will be called, The Lord is our righteousness. Of course, we know that He's looking and seeing beyond Judah. He's looking and seeing us. The church. Under our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is what God's promises look like. Fulfilled for us and given to us as we even receive this day the culmination of that promise in the very body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For remember, as we went through the entire Old Testament, we have seen the sacrificial system that God put in place. That the children of Israel were to do morning and evening on special festival days. Not because they enjoyed it, but because God said so. God said, do this. Little did they know, or as some did, of course, that it was pointing to our sacrificial lamb, Jesus Christ. His saving of His people, being our prophet, priest, and king, judging all things, and yet knowing that our judgment is innocence. Innocence because of Him that we are now able to call ourselves righteous in Christ. Living in and being the righteousness of God is our lives. Because the ultimate sacrifice that was promised has been fulfilled. Notice in our text it says a couple times, in those days, again, Jeremiah is seeing that which God had given for the future. Yes, even now. This new name that God has given to His people through His Son. For those days have been accomplished. Our righteousness is with us. His righteousness is now the name by which His church is called. For His promises are fulfilled. 
Remember, there's one promise that has not yet been fulfilled, but, as we know, it will be, but not yet. The Lord will return. When? Doesn't matter. We heard that last Sunday. His days will be accomplished and that day will take place. And we, whether we're still here or whether we've already gone to be with Him, we will be with Him forever. Those days have come. Those days have been accomplished. The promised King now sits upon the throne and has judged us righteous in His name. Amen. We join together in the singing of final stanzas 5 through 8. And please note we will rise for the singing of stanza 8. by all people everywhere. We give you humble and sincere thanks for the innumerable blessings that you have bestowed on us without any merit or worthiness on our part. We praise you especially for preserving for us your saving word and the holy sacraments. Grant and preserve your holy church throughout the world purity of doctrine and provide faithful pastors to preach your word with power. Help all who hear the word rightly to understand and truly to believe it. Send laborers into your harvest and open the door of faith to those who do not know you. In mercy, bring to repentance the enemies of your church and grant them amendment of life. Protect and defend your church in all tribulation and danger. Strengthen us and all fellow Christians to set our hope fully on the grace revealed in Christ. And help us to fight the good fight of faith that in the end we may receive the salvation of our souls. Bestow your grace in all nations of the earth. Bless especially our country, its inhabitants, and all who are in authority. Let your glory dwell on our land, that mercy and truth, righteousness and peace may abound in all places. We commend to you the care of our schools, so that our children may grow in useful knowledge and Christian virtue, and thus bring forth wholesome fruits of life. Graciously defend us from all calamity by fire, water, war, pestilence, scarcity, famine, and from every other evil. Protect and prosper all who labor in their rightful callings, and yet let all useful arts flourish among us. Be the God and the Father, the lonely and the forsaken, the helper, the sick and the needy, the comforter of the distressed, and those who sorrow. Continue to watch over Kay, Diane, Anna, Mary, Joe, Glenn, Jackie, Melba, Ken, Carolyn, Wayne, and Nick. Gracious Father, we ask that you will be with those around the world who are suffering because of once again the pandemic. Be a blessing to them, allow them healing, and yet if their time on this earth is over, we ask that you will allow someone to proclaim to them the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, if they do not know you. And for those that do, Father, we ask that you will grant comfort and peace as only you can give. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you that as you continue to bless us now as a congregation here in this place, that we may give you thanks and praise as we serve and obey you as we look to the joy and peace of our salvation during this time of Advent. 
Except we employ you, our bodies and souls, our hearts and minds, our talents and powers, together with the offerings that are brought before you this day as our humble service. Grant your Holy Spirit to those who come to the Lord's table this day, that they may receive the body and blood of Jesus Christ in sincere repentance and firm faith, and to their abundant blessing. As we are strangers and pilgrims on earth, help us by true faith and a godly life to prepare for the world to come, doing the work you have given us to do while it is day, before the night comes when no one can work. And when our last hour comes, support us by your power and receive us into your heavenly kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Continuing now with our communion liturgy, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give him thanks and grace. It is truly good, right, and salutary. We should at all times and all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us in all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying... King of all creation, for you had mercy on us, and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. In your boundless mercy you sent your servant, John the Baptist, to proclaim that in Christ the kingdom of heaven draws near. With thankful hearts we pray, come, Lord Jesus, confident that in his body and blood given us to eat and drink, we receive the forgiveness of sins, and so proclaim his death until he comes again in glory. Hear us as we pray in his name, and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supper and given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you refresh us through this salutary gift. And we implore you of their mercy you would strengthen us the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you all his peace. Amen. Amen. Just a brief announcement I would like to make before we join together to sing of our closing hymn. Uh, this coming Tuesday, that's the 30th, at 5 p.m., there is going to be a prayer service for life on uh, Facebook. Uh, you can go to the lcms.org site and you will find their information about why they're having this prayer service as well as a service folder and things like that because uh, December 1st the Supreme Court is going to be uh, again hearing arguments dealing with a case in the uh, dealing with Mississippi law banning uh, most abortions after 15 weeks and it's possible that the outcomes of this could have repercussions as well as good things for for uh, the uh, for life as we go into the future dealing with uh, the laws as we have them in this country so they're having this prayer service this coming Tuesday at 5 p.m. on Facebook but like I say if you go to lcms.org uh, the LCMS's website you will find much more information there so we join together this morning now in the singing of our closing hymn hymn number 353 Jesus came the heavens adoring <laughs> 